In a democratic form of government, people elect their representatives to run the government and distinguish democratic elections from non-democratic elections. Since 1982, the state of Haryana was ruled by the Congress government. However, the people of the state were not happy with the government's policies and practices. As the time for the next state elections approached, an opposition leader, Chaudhari Devilal, promoted the Nyaya Yudh, or Struggle for Justice movement, and formed the Lokdal Party, and joined hands with other opposition parties against the ruling Congress government. In the election campaign, Devilal promoted the Nyaya Yudh. He promised to waive the outstanding loans of farmers and small businessmen if his party came to power and formed the government. This proved to be a major attraction for the unhappy people in the state and Devilal's key to success. So, in the 1987 state elections, the people of Haryana voted the ruling Congress party out and the Lokdal party with 60 out of 90 seats in the state assembly emerged with a clear majority. The members of the newly elected state legislative assembly announced Devilal as the leader and he was sworn in as the chief minister of the state by the governor of Haryana. As soon as Devilal took charge as the chief minister, he wasted no time in fulfilling his promise and waived the outstanding loans of all farmers and small businessmen. Devilal's party remained in power for four years until the next state elections held in 1991. This time, his party lost the election and the Congress again came to power. We've learned that people in more than a hundred countries all over the world select their representative through elections. Some of these countries are democratic while some are not. What's the need for an election in a democracy? Firstly, we need to appreciate that in a larger community, it is not possible for all people to sit together regularly and decide on various matters of concern. Therefore, people elect their representatives to manage these decisions. The process by which people choose their representatives at regular intervals is known as an election. The process of an election in democratic countries differs from that of non-democratic countries. Let's take a closer look at the characteristics of a democratic election. Firstly, everyone has an equal right to vote. Secondly, different parties and candidates contest freely in the election and the voters have a right to choose their representative from the different contestants. Thirdly, the right to choose a representative is available at regular intervals. Therefore, elections are held at regular intervals of few years. Another characteristic about a democratic election is that the preferred contestant is elected. And finally, it's important that the elections are carried out in a free and fair manner. That is, every person has a right to choose his or her representative on his or her own will. How healthy is this competition? Well, let's analyze some of the advantages and disadvantages of an election as a form of political competition. Let's first focus on the disadvantages. The greatest impact of a political competition is the sense of disunity that arises among different political groups across different localities. People begin pointing fingers at each other for the simplest of issues and aim at winning the election by hook or by crook. These unhealthy practices deter the system to plan for long-term growth of the state or nation. Another major disadvantage of political competition is that good and deserving people hesitate to participate in this unhealthy competition and as a result, the people lose out on an able representative. However, a healthy political competition can also drive the nation towards growth and prosperity. Let's see how. 
Now, we all accept the fact that the politicians of today may have a sense of duty to serve the people they are representing. However, they also have an aspiration to grow their own political careers. Many of these politicians may not even have an understanding of the real issues of the people or how they could solve them. So, what's the way out? Well, one way is that we can consider educating them about their roles and responsibilities. Another more practical approach to the situation could be to define an appraisal and award system for politicians based on their performance in their political careers, where people appraise their political representatives. This is what is called electoral competition. In an electoral competition, politicians who keep the people happy earn an incentive in the form of a higher chance of being voted for in the next elections, while politicians who fail to satisfy the people they are representing have lower chances of winning the next elections. Therefore, we can see that just the selfish desire of growing one's political career can be a good motivator for politicians and political parties. Every five years, the Lok Sabha and the Vidhan Sabha are dissolved and the people elect new representatives this is known as the general election and is carried Sometimes the Lok Sabha and the Vidhan Sabha are dissolved. Such an election is called At times, apart from the general election, an election may need to be held for a single constituency due to the untimely death Going back to the case study on the 1987 elections in Haryana, do you recall that a total of nine... The first step in the election process is to divide the entire country or... For example, for the Lok Sabha elections, we learned that in a democratic election, people can freely contest in elections. The election system in India also The process of nominating the candidates for an election begins with political parties nominating their candidate. The candidate nominated by a party uses its symbol. Every contestant then needs to fill up a nomination form. According to some recent modifications in the nomination procedure introduced by the Supreme Court of India, Every candidate has to make a legal declaration of details, such as criminal cases pending against them. The key purpose of an election is to allow their people to choose their representatives in a free and fair manner. An election campaign provides an opportunity for the candidates and political leaders to contact their voters Political parties also use newspapers and In India, a period of two weeks between the announcement of the final list of candidates and the date of polling is allotted for election campaigning. During the election process, we often hear reports of unfair practices such as tampering of the voters list, misuse of government facilities by the ruling party, exorbitant spending of money on campaigns by rich political parties and threatening voters and rigging on polling day. Although some of these reports are true, in a vast country like India, no political party can win an election through such unfair practices alone. India has a democratic election system. The election system in India is controlled and governed by an independent and very powerful body called the Election Commission or EC. The Election Commission in India is equivalent to the judiciary. The EC is headed by the Chief Election Commissioner who is assisted by several election commissioners. 
under the guidance of the Chief Election Commissioner, the Election Commission of India performs several functions, starting from the announcement of the elections to the final declaration of the result. It drafts and implements the Code of Conduct for elections and takes disciplinary action against parties or candidates violating it. At the time of elections, the Election Commission is authorized to advise the government on decisions affecting the election and also control the transfer of government officials across departments and roles. Indian politics in the last 15 years has seen the Election Commission evolve in its role from a policy maker to an independent and powerful administration system. The Election Commission has the power to order a re-poll in case it finds evidence of unfair practices during polling. Another method to ensure that an election is democratic is to analyze the pattern of public participation. We can measure the people's participation through the voter turnout on the polling day. In India, the lesser privileged groups, such as the poor and the illiterate, turn up for polling in large numbers compared to the rich and the literate. Similarly, voters in rural areas turn out more than those in urban areas. Another study conducted in 2004 reveals that a majority of the people in India think their individual vote matters and can make a difference to the system. Another significant indicator of the free and fair nature of an election is the election result itself. In India, an average of about 50% of the sitting MPs and MLAs lose the election. Again, in most cases, candidates known for their criminal connections or intimidating voters with money have also lost elections. For example, in the assembly elections in Maharashtra in October 2009, several candidates known to have criminal backgrounds, except for a few rare occasions, in most cases, the losing party accepts the election result as the people's choice. This clearly proves that in India, the elections are fairly democratic. However, conducting a free and fair election has several challenges. All rich and established political parties and candidates enjoy an edge over the smaller parties and independent candidates. Besides, there are instances of candidates with criminal connections winning an election purely by virtue of putting pressure on other candidates to step down. Then, there are influential political families who get tickets allotted to family members only. For example, in the recent polls in Maharashtra, the candidates were the children of prominent leaders like Gopinath Munde, Sharad Pawar, Sushil Kumar Shinde and the late Pramod Mahajan. Another growing challenge is that most major political parties offer similar policies and practices leaving the voters with hardly any options to choose from. Such challenges are being faced by many democracies other than India. Therefore, it's important that the citizens of all these democracies collectively contribute towards reforming the existing practices and making the electoral system more effective.